Hello and welcome back, Eddie Rodosovich, George Stoya here from the Suterscoop.com studios. Happy Thursday to you and an off day for Oklahoma. Yep. They will be on the uh, the scrimmage field for the first time here during the preseason on Friday, which, uh, you know, should be interesting. And, you know, as we uh, kind of get into this, we are, I guess, officially the first week into uh, to camp. So welcome in, George. It's uh, it's It's been a pretty good first week outside of the uh, Jane Gibson news, obviously which we covered right here on the Suterscoop.com YouTube page yesterday. Yeah, it's been a, a, a really good week. I uh, put up some notes on Suterscoop.com, which uh, you can sign up, promo code OU1, right? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So you can sign up now and get those notes. We'll dive into some of it uh, here in a second. But, uh, yeah, it's been a, another good week. Excited to kind of hear about the scrimmage on Friday. Not sure what the practice schedule is going forward because it was supposed to be on Saturday. Moved it up a day, I think, because of the weather a little bit, which we're in for, it seems like a pretty cool weekend. Yeah, I think it's supposed to rain on Saturday, so obviously that would make sense why they moved the yep. uh, the scrimmage up. But, uh, you know, we told you guys on Tuesday a uh, great time over at Soonerscoop.com, and after a lengthy pursuit, uh, we are proud to announce that uh, homefieldapparel.com is the official OU apparel partner with Soonerscoop.com. And as you can see on the, uh, the TV screen, now promo code SCOOP, that is S-C-O-O-P for first... Uh, for fifteen percent off first order, really good stuff though. This is stuff that we've even bought. Yeah, no, this is uh, great stuff. I think my brother has several of these T-shirts. The bomber jacket, I think, is my personal favorite. You don't see it up here, but you can find it on their website. But just a lot of cool, kind of vintage gear, which is you know perfect for. A, you saw the news today with the new uniforms. Oklahoma awesome. going to have the throwback uh, uniforms. So uh, make sure you guys check out that gear. Like Eddie said, uh, you know the the promo code scoop. They also have the can't miss kickoff twenty twenty four, which I believe includes some some cool gifts. Yeah, absolutely. And the football box uh, three never seen before items coming out on August 9th, Yep. Which uh, you know is tomorrow. So take advantage of it. Uh, proud to uh, have homefieldapparel.com with us here at Soonerscoop.com. So let's get into a little bit of the stuff here today with uh, you know obviously the uh, the notes that you put up. There's been some uh, I don't know if they're necessarily surprises, but some interesting lines that Oklahoma's throwing out there on the offensive side of the football as well as uh, maybe a freshman that's impressing here early in the uh, preseason yeah it sounds like the younger Bowen brother uh, is working his Eli way Bowen yep working his way into I, again I don't think he's going to be a starter sure. we'll, we'll see what kind of contributor he is and how much rotating they do but he's been very impressive uh, so far in camp and I, I kind of put up some notes on some of the things he's been doing in practice where they're kind of playing him at and then on the offensive line I think that it's come down to, you know, what do they want to do at left guard and left tackle? Because as much as they love Jacob Sexton at left tackle, I think Michael Tarquin's done a really good job there. He's been super right. solid. And then at that left guard, you know, I think Jacob Sexton's getting a little bit of a look there at guard. Uh, he's also still playing some tackle, but I think that they kind of like that lineup there with Sexton and Tarquin both on the field. So we'll see. It's still early in practice. Uh, you know, I think, what, six practices in. Uh, obviously, scrimmage coming up, which I, I think the scrimmage will tell us a lot just because, you know, guys are going to stand out. Right. Some guys maybe won't stand out. And all of a sudden, guys will emerge. So uh, I think that that's been kind of the the overall, you know, I guess emphasis so far is is who who can stand up because you kind of know what you have in some of these guys, yeah. right? Like at this point, sure. they know what they have in a, a Dion Burks and Nick Anderson and those type of guys. You know, um, I, I think that it's other guys like a JJ Hester. Can he step up in Jaden Gibson's absence? Can an Ivan carry on? You know, mentally figure it out on, on the offensive side. Same with the Ahito Zeta, who you know we really like, and I think physically right. is ready to play. But can he mentally get there? You know, by August thirtieth, no doubt. And you know, I, I think it is interesting to uh, to make note of just in talking about. You talked about the left side of the line. You talked about it a little bit on the unofficial forty on the podcast on Wednesday. Just in terms of they have a true battle right now at center between yep. Branson Hickman and Joshua Bates. We feel pretty confident though that right guard, right tackle. I don't want to say it's been solid. Solidified, but Fibichi uh, Wuewu, as well as Jake Taylor, it sounds like, has really kind of put his step uh, foot forward at the right tackle position. Yeah, Jake Taylor's done a, a really a phenomenal job at the right tackle job, and and I, I think that he's 
probably going to start there. Uh, he's gotten the majority, if not all, the reps um, on the first team there at that right tackle spot. So you feel really good about him. Wee Woo has, I mean, I, I think he's kind of had his his starting spot locked up since the spring. And then that center position, you're right. It is, it's a true battle right now. I think Branson Hickman is starting to find his groove, understanding the offense, um, you know, kind of feeling his way out, you know, with those guys next to him. And uh, I, I expect Hickman to probably win that job. I would say he's the front runner, but Josh Bates has had a really good fall camp and, uh, you know, physically is a, a little bit bigger than Branson Hickman, has obviously been in the program now going into his second year. So uh, I wouldn't rule out anything. So that offensive line, again, it's early in camp. A lot, a lot of things can play out. Injuries can happen, unfortunately, like the Jaden Gibson situation. So it's still early, but it does seem like overall the offensive line has been pretty solid, which is, you know, a good, good news, welcomed news, um, considering what we were hearing somewhat in the spring. Whether he's at left tackle or left guard, I think that we uh, both agree that Jake, Jacob Sexton is going to be on the field yeah. uh, in some form or fashion. And we did talk to him on Monday. Just before we get to a little bit of the Jake Sexton stuff uh, or Jacob Sexton stuff from uh, from Monday. It was good to see him. Good to talk yep. to him. He looks great physically. Uh, did anything uh, just stand out to you from what uh, Jake Jacob Sexton said? I'm going to have a real problem getting in between Jake Taylor and Jacob Sexton. I'm going to call Jake Sexton, Jacob Sexton, Jake, and then I'm going to end up calling Jake Taylor, Jacob. But that's neither here nor there. That seems like a you problem. Man, it is. I, 100%. Not, I, I've not had that problem. But no, I, it was good talking to uh, Jacob. I, I thought that you know, the biggest thing that stood out to me, and, and you'll hear it, you know, Bob Persbillo asked him about his confidence. Sure. I, I think that that's been the biggest thing for him is now that he's seen the field a little bit because he did play at the end of last season for Tyler Guyton, I think he's feeling pretty confident in his abilities. And we all know that the ceiling is extremely high for a guy like that. And like you said, he's going to start somewhere on this offensive line. It's just a matter of where. And I think it speaks to his ability to be able to play multiple positions and, and also the trust from Bill Biedenbo. I mean, you're talking about a, a guy in Bill Biedenbo that I think it's hard to maybe earn his trust, especially as a, as a younger player. And Jacob Sexton has earned that. And right. I think he's also become the leader of that group as a guy that's going into his third season here at Oklahoma that has seen it you know, from the beginning under Brent Venables, I think that he's kind of taken that upon himself, kind of being an older guy in the room in terms of being in the program. Cause of course you have some transfers that have played a lot of football, but uh, I, I think it's been, it's been a really good progress so far for Jacob Sexton. Without further ado, here is Jacob Sexton talking about, you know, just getting back onto the field, getting into his third year in Norman. And then obviously there's a bunch of new guys within that offensive line group, working with them, building chemistry and all that kind uh, of good man, stuff I for Monday. I'm really confident. I'm excited for the season. Um, coming off my ACL, I feel amazing. Um, you know, I feel really good and ready to play um, and just go out there and dominate. How much has that offensive line maybe grown since the spring now that they've had some time together? I, I've really seen that, that O-line gel, um, not only as a team, but, you know, as friends. Um, they've gotten really close over this past off season, and, you know, all the transfers that came in, all the new guys, the 2024 guys. Foot they've all came in. They've created a really good brotherhood um, and just got really close to each other to where they're at the point where they can, they're holding each other accountable. They're yelling at each other, but it's out of love. You know, they're trying to get each other better. And I really appreciate that. Absolutely. I mean, our guys come in, um, you know, different schools call it different things, but really switching that terminology. Um, like for instance, Branson, when he came in, um, SMU calls different things, but in, at the end of the day, everyone plays essentially the same game of football. So. Um, you know, things are a little different, but majority of it is just switching those calls. But yeah, you can definitely tell. Is confidence the biggest difference for you? Is there something else that stand, stands out? Personally or yep. as a line? Personally. Um, I would say, yeah, confidence has been big, um, ready to go. Um, there's no ego to it, but just confidence in my work, everything I put into it, um, you know, I'm ready for that. With, with Heath, he's been lining up beside you a fair amount since the spring. Just how have you seen him kind of progress from where he was when he came in to now? I would say his mentality. He came in um, freshman year. Um, you know, a lot of guys are timid, um, but he came in, um, you know, aggressive. And then this year, I think he's really stepped into that um, mentality of being ready and just going against bigger guys, getting ready for the SEC. I think he's came in strong. Yeah, I've seen a lot of development and a lot of growth from Heath. Um, you know, not only that, but a lot of maturity too. Um, you know, he's being being asked a lot of right now to step up and, and be in that in that position to go out and, you know, potentially be able to start no line for us and just, you know, seeing him grow up and, you know, not only physically put weight on, but mentally mature, learn the offense, you know, learn his, whether it's calls and O-line or who he's, you know, who he's going to, whatever the O-line has to do to go out and execute. I feel like he's been doing that at a high level. Uh, you know, I've seen a big change of mindset from him. Um, he's like extremely excited to play some football and ready to dominate. Um, 
but also he's worked on uh, you know small things and his footwork and his hand placement. Um, he's always been one of the strongest offensive linemen um, in the chest wise, so his punch is always strong. Um, but that placement, now he's getting his, his placement dialed in, and that's one of the biggest things for him. Does it feel weird that you and him are kind of the, I mean, even though you brought in some veterans, that you and him are kind of the guys that have been around here the longest? Yeah, but I think it's kind of that time now. Um, three years, or this will be the third year for us, and uh, we've been in the system a long time, so all the guys are ready and excited. Um, but me and Jake just trying to get, get everyone rolling. I know they're just five, six practices into this thing, but it does seem like the offensive line maybe been a little bit better or maybe in a better spot than we thought that they would be here no. through uh, the first you know seven days of camp. But at the same time, it has sounded like, and we talked about this a little bit on uh, the show on Monday, just in the form of, it sounds like Javante Barnes has had a hell of a camp so far. Yeah, he has. Um, you know, I know talking to some folks this week, that's continued. Uh, and I know that's kind of the storyline the first week of camp. I, I think it's partly the storyline the second week of camp. Sure. Like, he has definitely asserted himself in that running back room. And, and I, I think Gavin Sawchuk, I, I, a lot of people – uh, feel like we've forgotten about Gavin Salchuk. He's also having a really good camp. Yeah. And it sounds like you and I were talking about this before we got on here. It certainly sounds like that one-two punch that we talked a lot about last year right. that we thought Oklahoma was going to have. It sounds like it's finally coming together this year and both guys are healthy. So they need those two to stay healthy. You know, I think Caleb Hicks has somewhat entered the mix as well. Uh, but he's, I think, probably a distant third. Uh, Taylor Tatum dealing with a little bit of an injury. Nothing too serious. I expect him to be back pretty soon. But um, those three guys, but especially Saw, Chuck, and Barnes, I think those two, uh, you can tell they're the older guys, and it certainly sounds like Barnes has his juice back. If we can jump all the way back to Saturday, we did talk to Brent Venables, and we highlighted uh, you know some of the best of the best from uh, Brent on Saturday. You can see that here on the Suterscoop.com YouTube channel if you missed it. But he did talk about Gentry Williams, and I think that it's a very interesting case study just in terms of it feels like Gentry's been here for forever, and, and Brent said it on Saturday. In terms of being on the field and being able to stay healthy, uh, that's probably object number 1A for him this, this this preseason. Yeah, I think he joked. He's like, I think he played in 10 games, but he maybe only played like one or two full games. Um, and that's how it felt. It felt like Gentry would come in, make a couple plays early in the game, and then it's like, wait, where did Gentry go? And it right. was, you know, he was laboring from some sort of injury. Uh, and I know I think it was his shoulder that right. he was dealing with late in the year. But sounds like he's healthy. He's getting uh, a lot of, if not all, the first team reps right now. Like he's going to, going to be a starter. I fully anticipate that. But that cornerback room as a whole, I think, is super deep. Uh, you talk about Kenai Walker's had a really good camp. Woody Washington's primarily playing corner. Uh, Jacoby Johnson, a young guy that I think that is going to get into the rotation. Desma Malone from San Diego State, we anticipate being in the rotation. So it's a really deep room. So if Gentry were to deal with some injuries, um, you know, they do have some guys. But I think unquestionably Gentry has the highest ceiling of that group right now. Uh, he's playing probably the best of anybody at corner and I think the expectations for him if he can stay healthy Eddie are extremely high he spoke on that on Monday just in terms of where he's at physically going into the season and kind of the expectations for the defense along for himself going into uh, 2024 you know first and foremost I want to give a lot of praise to Smitty and uh, his staff and changing my whole mindset you know I have to be able to push through you know when you're going through it because every day is not going to be perfect every day is not going to be great and you know I feel like my mindset's changed and I want to give all praise and glory to them and Coach Venables and Vala and all of them you know and I just got to be able to push through for my guys on this team you know they're counting on me and I'm counting on them so I really got to continue to grow. How hard was that last year? It was tough it was tough it was something that you know no player really wants to go through when you want to have success and you want to play with your brothers but it's something I'm glad I went through and I know what I don't want to go through this season with my brothers. Is there anything complicated or unusual about the surgery? Any difficulties that you had? No, everything went good. You know, I'm feeling great. You know, excited to be back and hungry, hungry. I just keep my head down. You know, I don't really look too deep into things and, you know, how I'm developing. If I keep my head down and if I make one progress every single day, then I'm doing something good, you know. And that's been my mindset, and that's just going to continue to be my mindset through the season. Well, I think it's good for him. You know, he's missed significant time. Right. I think he had ten, technically 10 starts last year, but probably played maybe four total games. You know, his total snap count is not great. And so... You know, getting him at being able to do something consistently, that's how you develop your skill set and the details of your position. Remember, this is a guy, and I know I've said this before, but a guy that coming out of high school, he just did a lot. And he played middle linebacker, you know, he played safety, played quarterback, was a running back, receiver, 
played very little corner. And, um, and so learning how to be a really good functional, fundamentally sound corner is something that, you know, that's what we've tried to do. And he was a guy that didn't come in in the spring or, you know, in the in January. He was a summer guy, and then we threw him in the fire. So he's got exponential growth potential ahead of him. And uh, this will be a – I think you'll see a tremendous leap from Gentry just in fall camp alone. And he's a super conscientious guy, highly skilled, you know, really cares about the team, cares about his uh, his opportunity, and uh, is a is a locked in focus guy. So I'm excited to see his his growth potential. That's very right, you know, and that's something that you know Coach Valai preaches that you have to like do the reps, you have to be in the fire and go through the hard times and tribulations, and that's something I've really been able to do right now. And I just give you know praise to Coach Valai, Venables, and Ali for them giving me this opportunity to really you know get these reps that I need to get better and not just use my athletic abilities. Most definitely, you know, let's start with Kanai Walker. You know, he played a lot of snaps because you know my mishaps last season, so he's definitely step into a bigger role and I'm, I'm happy to see that he's maturing. Des Malone, you know, we brought in a transfer, older guy, but doing a really excellent job learning the system. And then you got Jacoby Johnson, I think probably one of the best athletes in the country just off, you know, per pure ability. And then you have Dede and you have um, Newcomb as well. Just guys that, you know, they're learning. You know, they came in during the summer, but they're learning and they're eager to learn. I think that's the biggest thing we can do that. It's a man that's certainly been through a lot of trials and tribulations yeah. here in his young Oklahoma career, but it is good to hear, uh, you know, just the development at the cornerback position. And I think that, you know, we've talked about it many a times here over the course of uh, the last couple months leading up into the season was the fact that how many times have we talked about an Oklahoma defense going into, uh, you know, a, a, the beginning of a season, let alone particular position groups that you really feel like could be pretty deep. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. We talk a lot about the linebacker group and the safety group and how much it's it's changed in the last three years. I think the cornerback room and what Jay Valai has done with that group is maybe the most impressive. I mean, it wasn't long ago that, you know, oh, you had Trey Brown and Trey Norwood and that was it, yep. right, at corner. And there was no one else uh, to go out there. And you look out there now and it's like, like I mentioned and what Gentry just said, they've got like five or six guys that you'd feel pretty good about throwing out there. I mean, even a guy like Jacoby Johnson who maybe doesn't have – a ton of experience, but super dynamic, super athletic, a guy that I think has tremendous potential. Uh, and then some of the older guys, you know, you have a Gentry Williams who's played quite a bit of football despite the injuries, you know, Woody Washington, who's maybe played more football than anybody on the entire team. Uh, a Kanai Walker, who I thought was really solid last yeah. year in cleanup duty, especially when when Gentry was hurt. Um, and then you bring in a guy like Des Malone, who's played a lot of football. So uh, you have experience, you have youth. Um, it's a group that I think the the sky's the limit. Um, I really do. You know, corner's such a tough position, but it seems like they really do have the talent. The body types are different over there than what they used to be. I mentioned Trey Brown and Trey Norwood. These guys are built different than those, those two. Um, these guys are a lot bigger, a lot more physical, lengthier. Um, and I think that that's going to help them a lot, especially in the in this scheme. It's going to be uh, a lot of fun here over the next couple yep. weeks, obviously. Uh, some position battles to keep an eye on, maybe particularly the center position. Yeah. See if Eli Bowen can continue to uh, you know, give what he has here through and the he's first play, week he's of practice. he's playing everywhere. That's the thing about him. That's another guy. The Bowen know, brothers might be something. He, he, I mean, obviously, Peyton, is, he's going to be extremely good. Yeah. But I think for you know just the idea that maybe Eli could contribute as a freshman on a defense that we just spoke about, yep. as deep as they are, that would be incredible. Yeah, and you know, he I think he played mostly corner at Geyer. Right. But they kind of have him playing a little bit of everywhere right now on defense. And I think it speaks to – it's kind of like what Peyton was last year, right? Like we always heard like they don't know where to put Peyton, but he needs to be on the football field. It's kind of the same thing with Eli. I think his football IQ is through the roof. I don't know if he's athletic as, as athletic as Peyton, but still a really good football player, understands the game, is always in the right spots. And when you have guys like that, you got to find ways to get them on the field. And, and Brent Venables is as good as – as good as anyone at that uh, in terms of defensively. So it's, it's exciting, I think, for the defense. I think they had a really good uh, week of practice. Sounds like they kind of had the upper hand this week. We'll see what happens in the scrimmage. But um, it certainly is a positive for Oklahoma on that side of the ball. It's always kind of interesting to, uh, you know, get information from practice or from a scrimmage. And then you go, you know, if the offense was really good, well, what the hell happened to the yeah. defense and vice versa? It is, uh, you know, that's kind of the, uh, I guess, the juggling act that you have to uh, kind of play here as we uh, head into what should yep. be – the beginning of, you know, practice and all that kind of stuff with, uh, you know, not going to be too far away from the uh, August 30th opener. Yeah. You mentioned it. Lastly, uh, Oklahoma did announce on Thursday that they will be wearing an alternate uniform. The Rough Riders have uh, been awesome. retired. But, yeah, 
Not the these, Rough Riders. Rough Riders right. are not awesome. We need to be clear about that. Yeah, the rough, suck. the retirement of the Rough Rider coinciding with the announcement of the uh, the new ones yep. or the throwback ones from the Bud Wilkinson era celebrating 100 years at uh, Gaylord Family Oakland Memorial Stadium. There will be an, a different theme for each game. Bud Wilkinson, obviously, the uh, the first game of the season, or I guess it would be the third game of the season, yep. uh, you know, against Houston. Second Or game. second game. I knew I, – I had three opportunities there yeah. to get it, so I missed on – I believe it's September September 7th, 7th yes. Yep. Absolutely. Love them. They're awesome. I think they're fantastic. I think they're the best alternates OU's – had in a long time. I, I don't mind the anthracite ones. Yeah, uh, and those are staying around, the Unity yeah. uh, jerseys. I don't know when they'll wear those, just because I feel like they only you know wear um, a, a different uniform once a year. But um, there, you can see them right there. Uh, Sick. Great uh, gift there from Tattoo Baker, too. But, uh, yeah, I mean, those are those are awesome. And the it's photos side-by-side side are, are pretty sick. Yeah. I, I love the uh, Brent Minimals one uh, where he looks exactly like um, – uh, Bud Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah that one absolutely. Kind of there at the top. That's pretty awesome. Shout out to uh, the OU communication staff, Mike Alex group. That that was a really cool yeah. uh, layout, how they how they presented that on Thursday. So we will have more information uh, coming up on Friday on the uh, the scrimmage. Obviously, that will yep. be posted on Soonerscoop.com as you, uh, you know, posted the intel from this past week of practice. And uh, then we roll into uh, what should be a week number two. And hopefully we'll uh, be talking to a couple more of the uh, the players here coming up next week at some point. Those are sick. I love them. I love them too. I, I, like I said, I think they're the best, you know, alternates they've had since. They they wore the same ones in two thousand three. They look a little cleaner than the sure. ones in two thousand three. And I think that was a, it was raining in that game. That's a cool uh, photo too. Yeah, that's a the, great photo. The photo of them wearing those against North Texas and the uh, it was raining and Teddy, uh, Lehman. Teddy Lehman had yeah. the rain coming down. One of the most badass Oklahoma football pictures I think that's out there for sure. Teddy has a uh, a nice place in the uh, like lexicon of great Oklahoma photos that or the Roy Williams photo yeah eh, I guess when you're one of the better linebackers to ever play the game here at the University of Oklahoma maybe Stutzman will get his his photo this that'd year. be sweet that'd be sweet all right George for George Stoya I'm Eddie Radosvich we'll see you right back here on the centerscoop.com YouTube page